So now, so let's try this example also. So you have to find the current in the ten volts resistor. Okay, which is this resistor here? Okay, so so I'm going to calculate for the seven eight resistance, which is this LTH here. So if I can do that, if there are some voltage sources in it, I have to short circuit the voltage sources. And then there are some current sources in it, I have to open circuit the current sources. But in this case, I have two voltage sources, which is the four volt source and then the six volt source. So I'm going to short circuit these two voltage sources here. So after short circuiting them, I have the circuit to be this. Um, okay, so I've taken out the load resistor, which is the 10 ohms resistor here. Okay, so that's the resistor that you have to calculate for the current flowing through. So I take out that resistor. So then we have what our circuit to be this way. So now as you have this circuit here, you have to calculate for the effective resistance for this circuit here. And that will be 7 inch resistance. So to calculate for the effective resistance, let's take a look at that. So you see that for the 5 ohms and then the 15 ohms resistors are what the parallel connection. Same way the 8 and then the 12 ohm resistors are also in what the parallel connection. So you are going to find the effective resistance for these two parallel connections. Then we add them since they will be in series afterwards. So let's look at that. So for the 15 and the 5 ohms resistor, let me name that one R1. Okay, so that will be equal to 5 times 15. 5 times 15. Okay, divided by 5 plus 15. Okay, and then for R2, okay, this will be equal to 4 times 8. Okay, divided by what? 12 plus 8. Let's find the values for these two resistance values. So I have what? 5 times 15 divided by 5 plus 15. So this will give me 15 over 4, which is equal to 3.75. So that's 3.75. Okay. And then the second one, that's what? 12 times 8 divided by 12. Plus 8, that will give me a value for 24 over 5, which is equal to 4.8. Okay, so after finding these two effective resistance values, the circuit will become something like this. So I have one resistor here, which is the R1 here. Okay, then I have another one here also. Okay, which will be what R2. I know R1 is what 3.75. And then you have what R2 to be what 4.8 ohms. Okay, don't forget the unit ohms. Okay, so this is 4.8 ohms and then 3.75 ohms. So this will be my RTH here. So then you see that what these two resistors are now in what in a series connection. So to find RTH, we just have to add these two values here. So therefore, we have what RTH to be equal to the 3.75 ohms okay plus the 4.8 ohms so let's see the value for this so this will give me a value of 171 divided by 20 which is equal to 8.55 ohms 8.55 ohms so this is the value for the Seven inch resistance. So now that you found for the seven inch resistance, let's calculate for seven inch voltage. Okay, so to calculate for the seven inch voltage, I'm going to bring, I'm going to name the nodes. Okay, so this will be node A, node B, node C, node D, node E, F, G, and then H, K. So I'm going to calculate for 7 inch voltage here. So I'll consider the direction of the 7 inch voltage to be in this direction here. Which means it is moving in the counterclockwise direction. So that's what the positive direction. And you know from Ketchup's voltage law that the sum of the voltage drops in the loop should be called towards the sum of the voltage from the source. So I'm going to treat the VTH as a voltage source, which means that 
the voltage drops across this loop should be equal to what this VTH. Okay. So that would be VTH okay will be equal to the voltage drop across this resistor here, okay, which is what 15 ohms times what I1. Okay, so that was 15 I1. And then plus the voltage drop across this resistor here. By looking at the direction of this current, it's moving in a direction opposite to what to the direction of the VT, so it therefore it's both a negative current. So the voltage drop will be what minus 8 I2. Okay, so this will be the equation for the VTH. Now we see that in this equation, you have what three unknowns here, which is VTH, I1, and then I2. But I want to calculate for VT, so you first have to find what I1 and then I2. So to calculate for I1 and then I2, let's look at what will happen. Okay, so let me move this to this side so that I can this okay so now that i have this i'm going to calculate for what i1 and then i2 let's calculate for i1 i'm going to consider loop a b g h a okay so that's the loop i'm going to consider so in this loop we have the four wood to be the voltage source i'll consider the direction of this loop to be in this direction so we need that one from ketchup voltage law the some of the voltage drops in the loop should be equal to what? the total voltage in the loop. So the total voltage for this loop is what? 4 volts. That would the 4 volts should be equal to what? the sum of the voltage drops. And then you have you will have a voltage drop across these 5 ohms and then a voltage drop across these 15 ohms resistor. By looking at this circuit here, okay, when this I1 is coming from this direction and it gets to this loop, due to the open circuit here, the current will not move in this direction. So the I1 will flow back into this 15 ohms resistor. So the current I1 will be the same current that will flow across the 5 ohms and then the 15 ohms resistor. So if the 4 volt will be equal to 5 I1, okay, plus 15 I1. Okay, so let's simplify this. So this will give me 4 equals what? 20. I1. Okay, so I divide both sides by 20. You get the value of what I. So this will cancel out. The four will be of one, then go into 25 times. So I'll get I1 to be equal to 1 over 5 ampere. That's the value of what I1. So let me write it down. So I1 equals 1 over 5 ampere. Okay, so that's the value of what I1. So now that we know the value of what I1, let's calculate for the value of what I2. So to solve for the value of what I2, I'm going to consider the loops, the loop C, D, E, F, C. That's the loop I'll consider here. Okay, so you can the direction of this voltage source. I'll consider the loop to be be in this direction here okay so that'll be the direction of this loop here okay so now you know that what from ketchup voltage law the sum of the voltage drops in a loop should be called what the total voltage in the loop so the total voltage in this loop is for six volts so the six volts will be equal to that the six volts will be called to the sum of the voltage drops so i have one voltage drop here and then i have another voltage drop here so looking at this circuit you see that what this part of the circuit is open when this I2 is flowing from the source and gets to this node, it wouldn't flow in this direction, but it will flow back to this 8 ohms resistor here due to the open circuit here. So the I2 will flow across the 12 ohms and then will flow across the 8 ohms. So the 6 volts will be equal to what? 12 I2. Let me write this in. That was 12 I2. Okay. Plus. 8 I2. Okay, so let's simplify this. This will give me 6 equals what? 20 I2. 20 I2. Okay, so I divide both sides by 20. I divide both sides by 20. 
Okay, so 20 will cancel out 20 and then 6 divided by 20 that give me 3 over 10. 3 over 10. So I get what I2 to be equal to 3 over 10. That's the value of what I2 also. So I2 equals what? 3 over 10. So now that you know the value of what I1 and then I2, you can solve for what? VTH. So let's solve for VTH now. Okay, so now the VTH will now be equal to 15I1, which is what? 15 multiplying 1 over 5. Okay, minus 8I2, that's what? 8 multiplying 3 over 10. 8 multiplying 3 over 10. Okay, so let's find the value of what? VTH. So VTH will be equal to, so let's do the simplification and see. So 15 multiplying 1 over 5 minus 8 multiplying 3 over 10. That will give me VTH to be equal to what? 3 over 5. Okay, which will be equal to what? 0.6. That what? 0.6 volts. So I have VTH to be equal to what? 0.6 volts. So now that I have VTH and then RTH, I can draw Thevenin's equivalent circuit, then calculate for the current I in the 10 ohms resistor. So let's look at that. So now this will be the Thevenin's equivalent circuit where I have 0.6 here to be Thevenin's voltage and the 8.55 ohms here to be what Thevenin's resistance. And then I have the load resistor here, which is the 10 ohms resistor. Which current we are supposed to uh, to find. So now you see that what the Thevenin's resistance and then the 10 ohms resistor are now what in a series connection. So this current I here with the same current that will flow across this resistor and then this resistor. So when, I, when we are able to find the current I, then we will be able to what to find the current that's flowing through the 10 ohms resistor. So how are we going to calculate for current I? So we are going to use so we say so what voltage was what the product of what current and then resistance. So I'm going to find the effective resistance for this circuit. So since the resistors are in a series connection, the effective resistance we got 8 8.55 ohms plus the 10 ohms. Okay, so this will give me the effective resistance to be equal to 18.55 ohms. So this will be the value of the effective resistance. So now that we have the value of the effective resistance, let's calculate for the value of what current. So you know that what voltage was what 2.6, and this will be equal to what current times the effective resistance. So that what 18.55 times what the current I. So I'm going to divide both sides by what 18.55. 18.55. I divide both sides by 18.55. So this will cancel out, this will also cancel out. So let's see the value you get for 0.6 divided by 18.55. So this will give me the value of what I, okay, to be equal to 12 divided by 271. 271. Which I'll change to decimals, which will be equal to 0 0.032032 ampere. Okay, that's let me write it here 0 0.032 ampere. Okay, so that'll be the value of what the current are, and then that will be the same current that will flow through this 10 ohms resistor. So, therefore, the current flowing through the 10 ohms resistor will be equal to what. 0.032 ampere. This is how to apply the Thevenin's theorem to questions. So you just have to follow the steps and then you will be able to solve your current value. Thank you very much for watching this video.